no, no, but you're right, Ma. No, but how dare I? How dare I? I couldn't possibly know what it feels like to forget and set his place at the table. No, but you're right, but how dare I? How dare I? Listen, Ma, you had it easy. You had 35 years of marriage to remember him by. I had five. You had your friends and your family to support you. I had me. My friends didn't want to hear about it. They said, what are you griping about, huh? No, at least you had a lover. Because everybody knows that queers don't love. Queers don't matter. Listen, Ma, you had it easy. Your husband died in a nice, clean hospital. Mine died out there, on the streets, 23 years old. Lying dead in the streets, killed by a bunch of kids, Ma. Kids with baseball bats, children. Children taught by, by people like you because everybody knows that queers don't matter, queers don't love, and those that do deserve what they get. I only need two things in this life, Ma, two things. Love and respect. You are my mother. And if you cannot give me those two things, then you have no place in my life. Confidence. I'm scared from the moment I wake up in the morning. Everything. I get up an hour before you just to check if you're still there. I know Grandma is dead. I know she probably can't hear me. But I still speak to her every day anyway because I'm not so sure anyone else is listening. If I have to go in for an interview, my heart pounds so much, you can see it coming through my blouse. That whole thing about putting my name on the valet tabs, it wasn't my idea. It was Gordon's. He did it first and I just copied him. <laughs> if you want the God's honest truth, I don't even want to be an actress. I don't know the first thing about acting. I don't know what I want to be. I just wanted to come here and see you. I, I just wanted to know what you were like. I wanted to know why I was so frightened every time a boy wanted to reach out and touch me. I just wanted somebody in this family to hold me because it was me, Libby, and not somebody who wasn't there. Dad, how many times did I urge you to get out of that school and get a better paying job? You see finally why I kept pushing? You know what I think? I think it's good. This whole Doña Perez thing give you a chance to change your mind. Why not? Because you haven't gotten permission? Well, what do you really want, Dad? All you do is what someone else wants. You move to the States because everyone else is doing it. Now everyone's going back, you're going back. It's so accidental, so random. English and Spanish have a word in common, and that is no. No, I would not give you the money to go back there. When I graduated, I had a choice. Take a job offer from D.C. or come back home and help you guys. And I came back home because of all your motions for help the house. The car, Ramon's foot, I came back and took a job I hated. And tried to get you to take a civil service test. Dry out a little. Started a saving account, but I never got through. Mañana, Javier, mañana. I didn't have to do anything. You thought I came back out of obligation. I was 21. I would have respect you, but I don't respect you now. Hey, whoa, whoa, listen. I, I know you're mad at him, but that don't mean what happened to him was his fault. So what? Now you're just going to be like all the white people who think we bring this shit onto ourselves? Well, you know what? Maybe he shouldn't exist. Maybe none of us should exist. Maybe we should go back to being in shackles and chains because apparently that was easier for everybody. Now, the shackles are invisible, but the imprisonment is still the same. Oh, he's wearing a hoodie. Oh, his music's too loud. How dare he? There is a war going on, Aisha. Force was a casualty, not a cause.
I know one thing for sure. I sure feel like you do about marriage. I mean, I just don't know. <laughs> I know this one guy I used to go out with. You know that he asked you to marry him. He lived in the place next to mine and we were always together. And there wasn't any difference between his place or mine. We should have been paying for one's rent, but we were always together. And we decided to get married. We both did. I think we we're going to do the next day, Sunday, but we've been out all night. And then we were going to do the next week. And then, I don't know, something came up, one thing or another. But Cotton still wanted to, and so did I. I I really did. I wanted to more than anything because he was about the greatest guy I ever met. But he hadn't chickened out of it getting married. He just never got around to it. Maybe she'd like it. Are you out of your mind? You're the reason she's up there right now. You have no idea what she needs. You don't know her. She's my sister. Jesus, you fucking mathematicians! You don't think. You stagger around creating these catastrophes, and it's people like me who have to fly in to clean them up. She needs to get out of Chicago, out of this house. I'll give you my number in New York. You can call her once she's settled there. That's it. That's the deal. Take the notebook. Don't worry, I understand. It's very sweet of you to want to see Catherine, but of course, you'd like to see the notebook too. I don't care. Take it. What would I do with it? Someone needs to find out what's in there. I can't. It needs to be done here at Chicago. My father would like that. When you decide what we've got, let me know what the family should do. I can't get to the clothes in my closet for all of the saris. Unless sorry, then it means and how could I know about that? Take a walk down a dark and musty street in Brooklyn. You let a sorry soothe your soul. I'm gonna soothe mine. And you were always inconsistent. Doing something and then being sorry, being in my heart to death talking about you sorry. Well, I will not call. I am not going to be nice. But I will raise my voice and scream and holler and break things and race the engine. And I will tell all your secrets about yourself to your face. And I will listen in detail, every one of my wonderful lovers. And I won't be sorry for none of it. The next time, you should admit, you mean, trifling, low down, and no count straight out. But instead of being sorry all the time, you should enjoy being yourself. Finished, is it? The visitor's bell has rung and we withdraw to our separate worlds now? Cut. This man on the bench was once my husband, and I was once his wife. A sort of storybook marriage. Legendary. Yes, well, legends fade. It seems he's finally faced that. He just admitted that despite its ideal, relentlessly public appearance, it had been, I quote him, a monumental error, and that it had been a mistake for us to ever have met. How sweet of Scott to have flown such a long way to see me. A delightful surprise to find myself still remembered by an old beau that I thought must have filed me away long ago among his fantasies discarded. The gates are iron, they won't admit you or ever release me again. I'm not your book, Scott. Not anymore. I can't be your book anymore. Write yourself a new book. Fellas. Look, I know someone's put shoes up to this. And they probably paid you a little extra money too, yeah? Yeah, well, it ain't right. Pulitzer thinks we are gutter rats with no, no respect for nothing, including each other. Is that who we are? 
Well, yeah, yeah, we stab each other in the backs, and yeah, that's who we are. But if we stand together, we can change the whole game. And it ain't just about us. Right? All across the city that there are, there are boys and girls who ought to be out playing or going to school and instead they are slaving to support themselves and then their folks. Ain't no crime to being poor. No. Neither one of us complains if the work we do is hard. All we ask is a square deal. So, fellas, for the sake of all the kids in every sweatshop, factory, and slaughterhouse in this city, I beg you, throw down your papes and join the strike. Well, it's just... You haven't spoken to me in years, except to call me a faggot or to dislocate my shoulder. And all of a sudden I'm getting this stream of consciousness monologue about your dead dog while I'm trying to spend the only moments of my day that don't truly suck. In shop class last spring, you twisted my arm behind my back and told me you wouldn't let go until I said, and I quote, I like to get it up the ass. Fuck you, CB. I'd rather you say we beat the shit out of you because we couldn't stand you than for you to say you were just messing with me. That implies light teasing or slightly appropriate behavior. I haven't had lunch in the cafeteria in two and a half years for fear of going home with half of it smeared across my shirt. I haven't been in a restroom on campus since the time my head was slammed into the wall. I believe you were there. And how does one act gay? By playing the piano? Oh, it must have been all those times I ogled the football team. Or maybe I'll stop carrying around my pink purse. I don't want to talk to you. I just want to be left alone. I don't need social pointers. All I need from you is an apology for the five minutes that you have stolen from my day. You understand? No, no, you don't understand. You think that just because you have a PhD that you magically know how I'm feeling. <laughs> That's a lot of shit. You know, I, I bet that you've never cared about anyone your entire life, but you know what? I care too much. And That's why I'm going crazy. <laughs> That's, um, that's why I feel like I'm losing my mind all the time. I mean, um, did you know that I wake up in the middle of the night just drenched in sweat and, and screaming? I mean, yesterday I, um, I took my fist and I put it through a window and I fucking shattered it because my mom is dead. <laughs> She's dead. I can't even cry. I can't cry because if I cry, that means that I accept it. You know, I really accept. She's gone. And I don't want to do that. I can't. Do you understand that? I can't let my mom be gone. <laughs> 